Hey there everybody, Marl Games back again for another Vanilla WoW classic um, tutorial guide thing. <laughs> um, yeah, for Protection Paladin, so I've gotten a lot of feedback from my previous videos that I uploaded about a month ago. Um, it's really great to, to read all your comments and uh, again, keep leaving them. Um, I can keep making Vanilla WoW videos. Um, I played quite a few of the classes all the way to 60 and rated with, so I can probably give you some info if you need it. Um, so yeah, uh, this is going to be about my three favorite spots to AoE farm as a protection paladin. Uh, this first one I'm showing is in Felwood. Uh, I think I just opened the map there if you want to rewind to see where I'm at now, but what I just showed was uh, getting a Night Dragon's Breath here. Um, what it, Night Dragon's Breath is, it's like a health stone that gives you mana too. <laughs> so you just collect these in Felwood and they save your life and gold later on when you're... They really, like each one will save you from dying probably. So it's great to have a stack of them all the time. And uh, another great reason is uh, while you're collecting them, you can AoE farm in... Uh, Fellwood as a protection paladin um, and it's these trees that I, I'm doing it with um, basically you want to pull five at a time like you just saw me do and uh, you can kind of see which ones I pull um, basically you rotate between three spots pulling five at each spot um, and all they really do is melee you they don't um, they don't do any spells. They do like a knockback, but it, it's it's as long as you keep them in your consecrate, it doesn't really do anything. Um, and yeah, so because I'm wanting to consecrate so much, like you can see in my uh, damage meter I have on the side there, um, consecrate is actually making up around 45% of my DPS. So. Yeah, that's just the critical thing is uh, just keeping Consecrate down and you'll just, you'll kill them eventually. Um, and then you're using Holy Shield to mitigate damage so you don't die. Um, these really don't do much damage so you don't have to worry much at all. It, it's, it really is just a game about positioning them uh, so that they stay in your Consecrate. Um, so yeah, you can see I'm doing that. and. Um, because I'm consecrating, that forces me to use Seal and Judgment of Wisdom. Um, that's basically always what you're going to be doing in AoE situations as a prop paladin is using Seal of Wisdom. You only really use Seal of Righteousness when you're tanking in 5 mans. And the reason for it is because you get like really fast like initial aggro with Judgment of Righteousness and it, it just lightens the amount of consecrates you need to use if you're using seal and judgment of righteousness um, so just keep that in mind um, oh here I'm going to another night dragon's breath spawn um, it's over in this uh, satyr camp jade fire run um, so yeah, here it is behind these roots over here um, so if you don't, if you're not familiar with Night Dragon's Breath and like Felwood consumables, um, maybe just look up on Classic TV or something, and it it'll tell you the quest you need to do beforehand before you can start getting the salves, which allow you to cleanse the plants that give you the the Night Dragon's Breath. But it's it's definitely worth learning because the uh, it's just like having a second potion cooldown. And it is <laughs> seriously, it saves my ass so many times. Um, so yeah, I showed the three spots where to kill these trents at. Um, these are a nice thing to farm because they drop herbs, and uh, and the they drop the soul shard fragments that you need to cleanse night dragon's breath. Um, and they also, starting with uh, Naxxramas, they drop Savage Fronds, which can sell for like one or two gold each. 
they're used for like Argent Dawn rep and getting some epic items from that reputation. So uh, just remember that once uh, once like the final classic phase comes out. Uh, but still good in the meantime because you get you get lots of herbs and uh, and those soul shards that um, give you night dragon's breath. So yeah, um, there's also these water elementals in this area too. I, I don't think you can AOE farm them, but you can get water elemental items whenever you need them. So Fellwood's a good place to visit every now and then um, for those reasons. Um, yeah, here I'm just gathering about five of these things. Um, I'm using... <laughs> It's really, this is re one of the easiest spots to stay we farm. These are like level 52, so you could probably start doing this. Like I'm level 60 in this video, but you could probably start doing this at like level 50. Uh, for, I don't know, you could, I mean you could try it as early as possible. It's just, uh, you'll have to balance to see how many you can kill at once. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, it's, this isn't challenging for me though, so the gear I'm wearing is pretty much just maximizing my spell power uh, to do more damage with my Consecrate, uh, which again is like 43% of my DPS. So. <laughs> and then Holy Shield is 13%. Um, so yeah, so definitely just stack as much spell damage as possible when you're AoE farming. Um, yeah, because it Usually the delimitating factor is how many you can pull at once. Like, uh, there's just not really a spot where you can pull six of these trees at once. Um, so you just you just kill them faster by stacking spell power. Um, so that's cool. And so that's the end of that video. I'll go ahead and close that, and go to my next one, which is in Silithus. Uh, and they, that's the rock elementals that are uh, in like the north western corner of it where you have to kill them for the the Hydraxian Warlords quest um, the Molten Core quest line uh, but you can actually AoE farm these kind of um, kind of the, the criteria for AoE farm ability is that they just do melee damage and they don't do any dots like bleeds um, or anything annoying. Um, so yeah, these just are doing physical damage, so I'm taking like no damage because I'm just blocking at all or I have really high armor. Um, so you, again, just pulling about five or six. I, th I think I found you can pull six or seven in some spots around here. Um, so yeah, if you have this place to yourself, you'll be you'll be loving it. And uh, the reason you want to farm this area is that uh, these drop Essence of Earth, which uh, if you're a Paladin tank, you'll be needing quite a few for your shields because Thorium shield spikes require two Essence of Earth each. Um, so I just found that um, this is the best place to farm those because they can be expensive on the auction house like um, depending on how much these are farmed, um, they they can go for like 15, 20 gold each, because um, they're they're used by for a lot of different things, um, essence of earth, like uh, for spell damage, weapon enchants, which you may actually want to get as a protection paladin as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, these are e easy. Um, I'm using Skull Flame, it looks like, and just a bunch of spell power gear, um, and that's fine. Um, you can I have my damage meter up here, and it's breaking down my DPS sources. So again, Consecrate is doing 48% of my damage right now. Um, my normal attacks are doing about 16%. Uh, Retribution Aura is doing 11% of my damage. Holy Shield is 8%. Blood, 
Blessing of Sanctuary, it looks like six percent. And uh my skull flame shield flame strike is doing four percent and it's drain life effect along with my I think I'm using the ZG axe that gives drain life. Um, those together are giving me one point eight percent and uh my shield spike's doing about four percent. So there's kind of my <laughs> damage breakdown, if that's helpful. Um, so yeah, like I said, uh, these drop Essence of Earth. They also drop uh, Core of Elements during uh, Nexoramus patch. So again, those can be sold. And then they just drop uh, good vendor trash. So you just get stacks and stacks of these rock things that you can sell. So you can make some gold doing this. And again, the the great thing about AoE farming is you can just there's no quests involved, so you can just do it when you're like in a raid or something, and uh, yeah, you just do it all the time, and you just you're just constantly getting greens from it. So you, if you have like a disenchanter alt, you can de your greens and always have mats for um, for enchants for your gear. Um, so yeah, this is second favorite place to, to farm um, there you oh yeah right there you see I got an essence of earth so um, they can be kind of rare but uh, they do drop so keep at it and really this is just really easy place to farm um, and you can test different gear sets um, like I think I'm using a lot of high defense here which I'm not taking that much damage, but I could maybe kill them faster if I just stacked pure spell damage. So you can experiment with different ways of doing this. <laughs> there I'm using a grenade to pull a sixth one, so you can be fancy like that. Um, pretty much my rotation here is just sealed, seal of wisdom and judging wisdom. Um, not really judging on cooldown, just whenever I target swap around like when it gets close to dead um, I'll judge a new one and start hitting that one so you're just constantly regenerating mana and just using max rank consecrate as much as you can and then also holy shield um, pretty much you can sustain holy shield and max rank consecrate only by doing seal and judgment of wisdom um, so that that kind of makes it tricky in dungeons because, uh, like, you would want to use Seal of Wisdom all the time, but people will attack Skull first, and Skull will probably fall off you if you only are using Consecrate. So you, you just need that little bit of extra aggro of using Seal of Righteousness, I find. Um, it's just like the longer the fight goes the more you should like try to fit in a judgment of wisdom to just to because mana is just so critical for paladins um and someone asked about um auras so i think like the the best aura for protection paladins is sanctity aura but you only get that from ret paladin so um just a note on that is if you make friends with the Red Paladin, then his uh, Sanctity Aura is going to be great for your threat. It's just 10% more threat. It's great. Um, but second to that is Retribution Aura. So that's pretty much what I always use by default. Um, I would only switch to Devotion or Resistance Aura if I was like getting my ass kicked for some reason and it was important that I lived. So probably just like in group situations um so yeah and then i mean concentration or not that's for healing paladins um so yeah that's the worst um and really about rotation it's really just if you have like four or more mobs on you then you should be like prioritizing using your mana for consecrate um, if you have like two to three, then you should be prioritizing Holy Shield. 
and if it's just like single target then you should probably be using seal of judgment and or no sorry seal of righteousness with judgment of righteousness so there you go another seal, essence of earth just dropped <laughs> so yeah this is a great spot it's usually not too crowded so um although i have seen frost mages farm it here in silithus so um but yeah overall pretty safe and uh this will be more useful once you get to like AQ patch where you're going to be hanging around in this more often. So there you go. Um, I guess I'm heading back to town. So I'll end this video here and go to the final spot, which is Western Plaguelands. Um, so yeah, Western Plaguelands is definitely my favorite spot for just gold making as a as a solo protection paladin so um, this is how I usually enter it there's some key locations you can find chests in so I think that's where I'm heading to um, you just swim across this uh, this river or whatever to Ander Hall once you get to Chillwind Camp and you can find a chest there's actually like quite a few chest spawns in Ander Hall so if you can find where they are um, people don't check them very often so there you go I found one right there on like that upstairs of that house um, and then there's a second one inside this uh, this inn or whatever on the second floor um, I think on private servers you can see outside so I'm checking it there but if you if you go in on the, the second floor you can find another another chest possibly so but yeah so um so yeah, that's one thing good about Plague Lens, is there's lots of chest spawns. Um, depending on your professions, there's lots of herbs and thorium as well. So um, again, generally I recommend engineering as a protection paladin um, for grenades and all the helpful things you get from it. So um, I'm sticking by that. Um, someone asked about uh, gnomish versus goblin. The thing is, is like you should do both if you're gonna be a tryhard about it. <laughs> but like, uh, um, you should start with gnomish because you get a bunch of trinkets that way that are really good, but they're all like bind on pickup. So that's how you should start is gnomish, and then you drop that to get a goblin so that you can make sapper charges which are extremely helpful once you get into like raiding um like AQ40 and Nax sapper charges are like essential for a lot of your raid group to have um and you, you can only craft those as a goblin engineer and uh yeah goblin engineers um they can use all the go the gnomish trinkets. They just can't craft them. So you, you start as gnomish to craft uh, the the gnomish engineering trinkets. So and here I just cleared some mobs to open another chest. So just showed you three chest locations. So <laughs> you're welcome. You can generally find like maps of chests on online so it's just about how busy your server is so there you go um i don't tend to a we farm the humanoids as much in this zone um it's the zombies you want to do and uh so yeah this is get, this has the most potential to make you gold as uh aoe farming is you can just pull tons of zombies here and but you can see like I'm having to kill this mage here and this is a popular spot it's the uh, Dalson's Tears in Western Plaguelands and this is like the the number one spot um, just because again it's like uh, all these mobs do they cast on you is a disease that does damage over time but you can like cleanse that off yourself and they don't um, 
they don't cast it that often, so you really you just have to cleanse it once or twice, and you're good. Um, so here, I, <laughs> I, I'm literally pulling like I don't know, that's like 20 mobs at least. And I go upstairs to this house, um, and I'm using my hand of the Edward odd. Like I would only try to do this if you have Edward the odd, so that you can do self healing a little bit. And I. <laughs> Really, I over pulled here. Like I had to use uh, a, a Stratholme holy water, but uh, so yeah, you can see what you can get away with. Uh, um, but it, you have so many oh shit buttons as a paladin that like you can. You saw an important part of this was that once I had them up here, I divine shielded and bandaged. So that way, it's just a free heal, and you don't use your mana when you bandage. And these just drop a ton of rune cloth, so um, so you'll you'll be swimming in bandages, so you might as well just use them when you're fighting. Um, so yeah, basically, whenever I pull a huge amount like that, um, you should be expecting to like once you get low in health to either blessing of protection or divine shielding yourself, and then just bandaging right away, um, and that'll buy you enough time usually for your your consecrate and stuff to, to finish everything off. Um, so yeah, I'm using Blessing of Sanctuary here, Retribution Aura, Seal of Wisdom, and Judgment of Wisdom, and just kind of tab targeting once my uh, target gets to like 10% or something. Um, and this is where you want to be using a, your Argent Defender. So you're getting hit like when you pull like 10 or 20 mobs like this. Your Argent Defender is going to just save you from so much damage because you get, you're basically going to have like 70% unbuffed um, block chance. So you just take no damage. <laughs> so even though you have 20 things hitting you, you take no damage. So it's just freaking broken as hell. <laughs> but that's how pal Paladins are in Vanilla WoW. So, um,. So yeah, um, I would I wouldn't try pulling this if I didn't have Hand of Edward the Odd, that epic BOE weapon I'm using. Um, but it, yeah, it lets you cast Holy Wrath if you have enough mana for it, or you or you can just flash a light yourself. So um, and when you're doing this, you want to be stacking like spell damage. So you you I mean that'll benefit your flash light as well. So can't highlight enough how great um, Hand of Edward the Odd is. And uh, you also want to be using your Argent Dawn Trinket so that you can get Scourge Stones doing this. Um, it's just a fast way to get rep with Argent Dawn. <laughs> oh god, here's the... So here you can see this place gets competitive. So you have the 60 mage attacking me and a level 50 mage who I didn't even know was here and uh, see uh, p mages can be tough to fight as paladins I kinda blew my divine shield early here not not that great I'm trying to keep this mage up that's level 50 but I probably should just let I don't know this is <laughs> it's kinda crazy I'm only saved by the fact, really, that he had mobs hitting him, but, yeah. So this is what you'll run run into sometimes if you're on a PvP server. <laughs> so you try to farm this location. I mean, it's it's still worth trying, because you can get away with it, but uh, mages love to farm it as well, so that's going to be your main competitor when you're trying to AoE farm locations, so... <laughs> So here, I instead of escaping, I tried to save that level 50 mage, and now I'm paying for it. And <laughs> I tried to put on my rocket booth. Oh, there, I, there you go. I I lay on hands myself, so totally wasting that cooldown. But it's kind of nice to have lay on hands as a backup when you're AOE farming. That's uh. Oh, there you go, it's my rocket boots. So, this is hilarious though, is that right before my mount went off, my boots malfunctioned and dazed me, and then I died. So, 
so there you go. So, <laughs> that's what engineering's like. But imagine if it worked. That would have been an epic escape. So. So yeah, there's some more spots uh, that you can go in the Plague Lands. Uh, you can't really AoE farm anything, to my knowledge, in Eastern Plague Lands. Um, like everything has a really annoying effect. Like everything fears or does something in that zone. So uh, generally, it's Western Plague Lands that's best. Um, and again, pretty much the the stats you want to use are uh, spell damage, as much spell damage as you can, basically. But uh, you experiment with pulling more mobs, and you see how hard it is for you to live. And then, so you have to counter that with like stacking more stamina and defense type gear. So, um, if you find the zombies too difficult or crowded, you can also go up here. Um, both in Hearthglen, there are some worker mobs, non-elites. And right here, these lumberjacks, you can AoE farm. So here I can pull probably like eight or nine at a time. There's like two spots for it. Um, so this is really good. Um, again, these drop a lot of rune cloth too, so and a lot of greens. So that's what I find is I get a ton of greens farming. Yeah. And also gray items, which like vendor for quite a bit. These like the the gray two-handed axe and stuff. These can drop it, um, along with the zombies. So you, you make some decent gold doing that. Um, it's just the the only annoying thing is you have to go back and vendor, and you have to like delete the mushrooms and stuff out of your bags. You could be smart and like bank a lot of your stuff if you have room for it before you go out here and do it, but. Um, but yeah, whenever you're in Plague Lens and you're like waiting for a group to form or whatever, you can just go up here and farm these for a while and get some free greens. Um, and that just adds up over time. So, um, yeah, AOE farming, great thing to do. Um, just when you're kind of idling, waiting, which you have to do a lot in Vanilla WoW for like your raid to form or whatever, if you're in a pickup group, so... And it's not, it's no quest involved, so you can do this no matter what. So, and this this lumberjack spot, rarely I see people here. And uh, there, there's actually a rare spawn here too, so you can. I think he drops like a black ra blacksmith recipe and some other, or just like a green, so you can check for that up there. Um, <laughs> so, so I'm trying to go back to the zombie place. Um, usually the the mages are not AOE farming the ones around the house, so you can always get away with just pulling these ones and going inside the house and killing them up there. That's like the safe spot. And I, th I think I showed earlier that there's a chest spawn up here on the second floor, right? Just where I am right here. So there you go. I'm there. I use blessing of protection, bandaged, and uh, just enjoying those Argent Defender procs along with uh, my Edward the Odd procs to heal myself with. So It's close, but I, I managed to do it. So <laughs> takes up all my mana, but I, I am regenerating it the whole time with Seal of Wisdom. So there you go. So pretty good footage on how to AoE farm as a prop paladin. Um, just I'm in like Prebus in this gear, so you'll just want to pull less if you don't have as good gear or if you're not 60 yet. But you should be able to get away with killing like at least five of these if you're like pre 60 in your protection. So try it out. I didn't, I really didn't try AoE farming when I was leveling, really. I was, I was busy doing like Black Rock Depths and, uh, oh god, <laughs> just got ganked. So. <laughs> Try this spot out. If you get frustrated, go to the lumberjacks. Check for some chests. But yeah, so <laughs> I think this leads into a funny chase for this mage, because yeah, he wanted that. That might have been that, because when I first entered 
that area I had to kill like a level 51 mage so maybe that was his friend or something it's like this was this was on like a China server <laughs> so <laughs> the Chinese are well I won't say anything but um, so yeah hopefully this has been helpful um, again let me know if you have any feedback on this AoE farming um, I think next I might be doing some videos for warriors but I'll totally take requests if you want to know more about a certain subject for a certain class um, I've probably played most as warrior, druid, paladin um, and warlock um, but yeah I'll see what the comments are to this and uh, and here now is my epic bubble hearth so enjoy this <laughs> as I escape from this mage and there you go thank you all for watching that's the end of the video